All right, this is Lori, also known as Pink Girly. I don't know what that noise was. And I wanted to work on my little pocket folders. I mean, my pocket, my envelope journals. And I just thought I'd go live because I was going to record anyway. And if anybody joins me, great. If not, that's fine, too, because I was going to do this anyway. I've got a couple of journals started. And they're in process and in different stages. So I was going to do a recording. Um, so I'll see if anybody pops in. I'm not sure that I am going to be able to reach out if anybody does come in. Let me see if I can find myself here. All right, so let me see if I can find myself on YouTube. Put my ringer down. Last time I tried this, I had all kinds of echoing and noises on my stream. Oh, there I am. All right, so we'll see what happens. So I like these little envelope journals. And the gal that I saw make this first is, uh, her name is... G G I K E R K E R R. I believe she's in Portugal. I always like to write it down because sometimes I personally have a hard time understanding sometimes what the streamers are saying. So her name is G Kerr. She has her own channel. She does beautiful, beautiful things. She does all kinds of stuff. Uh, with paper, all kinds of journals, inserts, tags, but she, and this may not be exclusively her idea, but this is where I, I saw and learned how to make these. And so if you follow Mary at the Mary Atia, she's been doing uh, a journal a month. And so the journals I've built for those are also envelope journals. Let me see. This one is not. This one's different. But this one is my Christmas, my December one is an envelope journal. Oh, I have someone here. Oh, let me see. I think it's Cheshire. Let's see. How can I... Bye. Bye. So now I'm going to get my. Oh, you were watching G this morning? Oh, I love her stuff. Hi, Kat. Well, this is my Christmas one. I have a hard time. I wonder if there, there's got to be a way, right, that I can probably make my. Hi, Ann. Oh, Ian, you probably would know this. Maybe a pop-out chat. Hi, Holly. Yay, Holly with the wrench. Yay. Oh, I just did a pop-out so I can see my chat a little better. I was going to just do this record, you know, record this, and I thought, well, let me pop on and see. I'm still not quite sure whether I'm going to be a good fit for live streaming, but I thought, well, let me give it, let me give it a go this morning. So thanks for coming in. So I was just going to show my December journal that I made from two envelopes because I was inspired by G. Kerr. And so um, I just used some. Now I'm just going to see if I can scoot my. Now I guess I can't. Oop. I don't know where it went. Oh, oh, there we go. Okay, well, I guess it doesn't matter. I'm trying, I think I'm in screen there. I have my pop-up so I can see my chat right over top of where I'm working. I'm going to see how this works. Anyway, so this is two envelopes, and then I just um, Velcro the back. 
but you could put a magnet um, or you wouldn't really have to do anything. You could just use ribbons and tie. So I use two craft envelopes. So you can see you have a pocket here and you have a pocket in the back. And then um, I lined the flaps with some appropriate paper and then I stitched in two signatures. I used cloth to put my envelopes together. And uh, of course, I'm like so far behind on these journals. It's really, really not good. And then I added two extra little pockets in the center and then stitched those in. See, see how see how far behind I am. And I'm already seven days behind in my January. <laughs> Holly's the best mod. Okay, so that was my Christmas version. And I found an old smash book in my stash. So I'm using that for Murray's journal of the month. But then I went ahead and made this little, or two little envelopes. And I wanted to get some stuff ready for my Etsy shop. So I have a couple of um, journals here in process in different stages, or at least I think they're different stages. And uh, so this is two small journals of envelopes. I just put my little Velcro on. And I just cut up some um, random strips of paper that I had kind of stained and distressed a little bit. And then I um, spattered them. And then I had a piece of muslin that I wanted to use down the spine. But I didn't want just plain. So I spritzed some uh, watered down acrylic paint on it. And then I stamped it. And so I used that. And then I have my two little pockets. So I just used some matching paper, decorated that up a little bit. And of course you have the pocket in the back as well. And then I just decorated the front with a little bit of lace, put a pocket. Now with my sewing machine, I'm not too great with the tension. It's an old, old machine. So I had a little tension problem here where you can see that it kind of got loopy. So I don't know about putting that in my Etsy shop. I may have to come um, along there and see this end got okay. It's a, a different kind of a stitch. I have to trim off my little threads and such, but um, I might have to put some uh, washi tape or something. Of course, it did it in the front flap. And this is a napkin that I put down on the cover. So that's that little guy. And I have a few others here in process. So I was just getting ready to start the video. This one is uh, I decided to try a black envelope. And I just cut down some, I just want some white paper in this this one and I'll stitch that in I have it all cut apart so that I can stitch and do what I want inside and line this paper I don't have paper picked out for this so that's going to be one again this is a napkin and see I don't know what happened here I don't know I guess maybe that's some of the glue made it a little want want so I'll have to decorate on top of that and this is just washi tape that I put on the back of this, the spine of this one. And then I have another little guy started. This is also a napkin. And I've lined the inside. And then G takes them apart so she can stitch down the center. And then she puts them back together and she can stitch around the whole outside of her journal. So this one also is in process. I haven't uh, cut paper for the inside of this yet. And I have this one I did with scrapbook paper. And I was just going to grab some. I think I want to make this one an art journal. So I want to put some, um, I think, some either sketch pad paper in here. 
and I'm not sure. So I haven't, um, I was just getting ready to do that, but I've lined the inside flaps, got that all cut apart. I've used seam binding on this, on the middle of this one. And then I thought I would start my video or my live stream showing you how I glue and what I do to get started. So I like these envelopes because they're the craft color and they're square, different, different kind of a shape. And I picked out a, a napkin that I liked. And I peeled off my extra layers. So I just have my very thin top layer of my napkin. This one I already did. Now, I'm not sure if you'll notice, but on this one, because I wanted the image to go a certain way, I flipped the envelope, I flipped the napkin over, and this is the shadow, like the back side of it. And I think that's going to be the left hand side of my, or the back cover of my, um, trying to see where that, my ring light is causing a, I hope that's not too much of a glare for you. I have so, oh, it's over there. I have such a hard time with that. Everything's backwards. And so I need to get the rest of my napkin on the other side of my envelope. And I'm going to use my golden matte medium. And because there's a space in between where the napkin folds and I want more of this image here, I'm going to I'm going to just tear this and piece it on this way. Now I put my napkins down a little bit different than some of the other gals. And I think I'm going to use this little piece here. And I think I'm going to go upside down again so I can get my image on that way. But the one trick that I use that I saw a gal who. Um... Oh, hi, Deb. I can't type with my mouth full. These days I can't type, period. All right, so I have my glue brushes like Dee Dee in a pot of water. And I've got my golden matte medium right here, but I'm going to use a piece of saran wrap. And you can use what you pick up at the dollar store. I stole mine out of my kitchen. Don't tell Ron. But I have that handy. And I find this a little easier. Got a post, so I'm just going to get my glue brush. Sometimes my glue brushes don't get all the way down the water and they stick to each other, and that's annoying. I should use a probably use a bigger one than I'm going to use. And I save all the backs of my napkins so I can use those for a variety of things. Okay. Let's see. I see. Yeah, I love the Christmas one. Oh, thank you, Holly. Uh, all right. I have to clean a mod. Okay. So I'm just going to take my matte medium. And I usually just douse my surface. Sometimes I put a little extra in a little pot if I'm doing a couple of different things at once. I craft to put things in my Etsy shop or um, I'm in a, co a couple of co-ops, an antique store I'm in. So I'm always making stuff to sell. And sometimes I've got a show coming up. So I usually do things in bulk. Usually I have two or three things going at a time. Now this is way too much matte medium. So I'm just going to brush this off. And I'm putting it in a little 
dish I have on the side here because I'll use that for my next. And I really need a bigger brush here. But my larger brush stuck to my other brushes. Wah, wah, not good. Now I'm just going to drop my napkin down where I want it. And I think I want it to go this way. And then I'm going to take my saran wrap and pop that on top so that I can gently smooth out my napkin. Now, I watched a gal do this a long time ago on YouTube. I have no idea who she, who she is. And she kind of just pulled it. Actually, I was watching her um, put napkins on wooden um, bracelet forms. And uh, she was able to stretch and pull her napkin very nicely over that form. Now she said um, you can either leave it dry this way or pull it right up. So I usually pull it right up. But it does help you get, and I don't really mind the wrinkles of the, of the napkins. I kind of actually kind of like it. And there you have it. So it just makes life a lot easier to me. I left this little bit of an overhang here on my flap. And I really don't want that straight edge on that napkin. So I'm just going to take this and tear it a little bit. You could um, put a little bit of water with a brush on there and kind of uh, roughen that up a little bit. And I'm going to use my napkin upside down. It may or may... It may end up being a genius idea or not so much, but that's what I'm doing. So I'm going to take this extra matte medium that I had on my brush and do the rest of my envelope. And I'm going to position that where I think I might like it. And come back with my saran wrap, plastic wrap, I guess I should call it. Not brand specific. Yeah, I um, was surprised. I mean, this lady was putting napkins on wicker baskets on brace a wooden bracelet blanks she was doing all kinds of stuff and i had never seen that before so then i'm just going to put that aside let that dry a bit and then i want to um i want to cover this part of my envelope with the napkin as well I really like that little rosebud, but if I now I said this was going to be my back, so if I do that, make sure I'm I'm directionally challenged at times. You to see me in a car. It's a blast. Okay, so I have somewhere here. That's too large. I want a little piece of plastic or paper bag or something. This is good. I, <laughs> I save everything. This is one of the little sleeves when you buy like some of the Tim Holtz stuff. I'm just going to scoot that in my envelope so that I can put down my napkin and it won't stick and close my pocket. I still have a good amount of uh, that medium over here. So I'm just going to use that up. 
And I'm just going to paint that around. Now, you'll be able to tell, like, when you use your saran wrap, you can get several goes out of it, actually. Um, I always try to make sure that I put the uh, sticky side down because some of the medium is going to come up through the napkin. And that way your hands really don't get too messy either. And I'm not worried about my edges because... Um, I'm going to come and trim that off. So I'm just going to drop my napkin down again. And take my plastic wrap. Let's do that out. Now I didn't pick out... Um, a paper to line my the inside of my flap. I'm not sure I will do that on this one just because it would be different to leave it unlined. And I do like the craft. Hi, Kimberly. Thanks for coming in. And it usually doesn't take too long for this to dry. Of course, I could get out my heat gun. I have stuff laying all over. And then my ring light is making a not a pleasant look. I bought this uh, glass mat, and I do like it. But it's not the best, I don't think, for recording. So this is still a little wet for me to do the other side. It's a little wet right there. So I'm gonna get my heat gun out, folks. a little on the cooler side so things don't dry as nicely as you might in a room that's a little more heated. I just want to dry it up where I can flip it over and do the other side of my envelope. I can't find that other piece of my napkin so I guess we'll let that go so I'll come back and I'll glue that on to that second side. It's still a little damp. But then I need to decide what I'm going to do with the spine. So I think I'm going for seam binding. So eventually what's going to happen is it's going to go like go together like this. Now, G. Kerr says you can use paper, you can use material, you could use duck cloth, which I know is a material, muslin. Um, I thought about lace. And I guess you could glue that down with Fabri-Tac and it would look, you know, half decent. But a lot of times with the lace, I don't want to stitch through it. So I have... Uh, friends at the um, co-op where I have my things that um, they work with materials so they save me all their scraps so sometimes I have some really cool material scraps I'm thinking I want a little darker of a color I'm 
Now this seam binding is really wide. I think it might be a little too wide. Hmm. That may be a little too boring. I picked this up at I think Walmart. I think Walmart where they have all their discounted fabric. I don't think that would be strong enough without paper or something underneath. Not liking that. I thought I had all these little things picked out in my, in my little work box here, but I don't see them. This is kind of cool. This is some, um, I don't know what you would call this. It's real fuzzy, almost like a, hmm. What is duck cloth? Duck cloth is like a heavier weight type of, um, uh, where the fibers come together. You know, like if you cross stitch, how you can see those little squares, you kind of can see that a little bit, but it's real durable and sturdy and a lot of book binders use it. Um, I've been using the Tyvek, but um, you can use duck cloth. And um, it's real stiff and has a lot of body to it. This is kind of fuzzy, but I kind of like the way that looks. So I'm going to see if I can make that work. In my little bag of scraps. Now I want to be able to see the edges of my envelopes really well. So I'm just going to trim off um, that excess napkin. And I've lost a couple of pair of scissors in the rubble. I have no idea where some of my larger scissors are. And I always seem to cut better if I hold, I guess because I'm right-handed, if I hold the piece in my left hand. Ricky. Okay. I'm like Julia Child, I just brush everything on the floor. Yeah, I didn't used to make journals, but I've got I've gotten hooked. I don't like to journal. I just like to make them. I don't mind the art journaling, but that other jazz where you have to, you know, write down your feelings. I'm not into that. Okay, and this is a little bit of a crapshoot because you kind of are doing this blind. So I think this might be, I think this might be wide enough for me to do both the inside and the outside. So I'm going to cut this in half. And then I'm going to use my fabric tack. I'm not a reader and I'm not one that journals. I do like rough edges. And like a little. I think I pulled that a little too much, kids. Okay. Now, this is going to get stitched down as well. But I'm going to lay this down. And this, I 
can, taking out that little piece of plastic there. And I've got my fabric tack right here at the ready. Uh, yeah, I hear you, Holly. Okay. So I find it easier just to put the glue um, on the edge of the paper rather than on the material. And I'm just going to lay that first one down. And then repeat on the other side. And the only thing you need to be mindful of is, is if you have a specific pattern to your napkin or if you're using scrapbook paper, you just want to make sure it's going in the direction that you want. And so peeking under my napkin there so I can line these up as best I can. And then give that a little press down. And then my other half. I have no idea what kind of, it's not really like a flannel. My girlfriend at the co-op gave me this and it's, I love things that are soft and fuzzy. This is very soft and fuzzy. It feels like my puppies when they come home from the groomer. And so then this is gonna go right on top like this. And I try to use a coordinating um, thread when I go to stitch all this down. And I'm going to put my glue on both sides. I'm just trying to eyeball that underneath portion. Now that was silly because I didn't do this part. But see, I have... I have uh, not glued that totally down so I can sneak my napkin still in there all over the place in my drawer and I didn't pull out enough to finish that side. So I really just basically wanted to show you um, how I covered my envelope with a napkin and my little um, plastic wrap tip. Oh, thank you, Kathy, and welcome. So then what I would do is I would trim in here and get this extra napkin cut away. And look, see, I didn't put enough matte medium down. So I'll fix all that. But then what G uh, Kerr does when she's making her journals she trims all along here with her paper cutter and opens up the edges, which I'm not going to do because I need to glue this down better and I need to get another napkin for this side of my journal and I'm going to let this dry. But I have one in this stage because I'm very prepared. Wah, wah. <laughs> Okay, so like this little guy. So what I did was the same thing that you just watched me. I put my napkins and glued them on my envelopes, right? And then I picked out my material, glued that in place so it looked like this. And then I took it to my paper cutter and I trimmed off just a smidge on both sides so that this is what you end up with, where you can open up the envelope totally. Makes it a lot easier if you want to line your flap. All right. You don't have to line your flap. Sometimes you're not, your envelope will hold up. But like this black one, this is a um, this envelope feels more like a linen type material like linen paper. 
and see how that's curling. So I'm definitely going to line this with something so it gives me more stability um, when I use that to be able to wrap that around my book. So what's next for this particular and she holds this part of the envelope out and she stitches down here. So you've got your binding glued down, but then you're also going to stitch this down. You want to make sure that when you stitch that, you don't stitch through both front and back. Because if you do that, um, your pocket. It is not going to be flip this back, stitch here, flip the other side and stitch. And then she opens it all the way up, flattens it out. Now I usually start at the bottom of my book. And then I stitch all the way around through all layers. All the way around. Do, 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 do. Now, if you wanted any top stitching here, of course, you would do that before you stitch the whole thing shut. Okay. Because you could stitch here, here, here. You don't necessarily have to do that. And this little guy, let's see. I, I did. I stitched around the pocket opening. You can see where I stitched down my seam binding. Yeah, I love I love stitching on paper. My husband thinks I'm crazy, but I really like it. Okay, so that's the next step. And then um, you need to have your pages ready. So after I stitch that down, I would then put my pages in. You can put in as many pages as you think you can fit in there comfortably. All right. Fold them in half. Now, the thing that I found, because I'm not a sewer, is that when I first started to do it, I didn't stitch correctly because when your needle go at least for mine now i'm using a bigger needle because uh, a couple of things i've read said use a bigger needle so i'm using a bigger needle in my sewing machine and like i said my sewing machine is really old and i'm not really sure how as far as making an adjustment but when i first started to do it this is how i would stitch it this side up so i could see what i was doing but when the needle pokes down through the paper and it punctures through, you have kind of like a rough edge where that needle comes through. I'm not sure if you can really see this. Um, like this side, it's real smooth when the needle goes down. But on this side, it's rough. So... If you stitch it this way, this is going. the inside is going to be your neater side, and the outside of your journal is going to look like it was chewed up. So I've learned that you need to stitch blindly. So you want to make sure your flaps are where they, where they should be, and when you stitch around, you want to make sure you're lined up where you need to be and that these things are laying flat underneath. So when you're sewing, you want to kind of check that. Does that make sense? Oh, wow. That's nice, Holly. Yeah, I would love to have a different machine, but this one works. So just be aware of that. I mean, and you can try it like on a piece of scrap paper so you can see how your machine works. And um, it's also a good way to check different stitch options that you might have. And um, same way when you're putting your pages in, 
Now I kind of cheat on that and just kind of eye. But it would be a lot easier to be able to stitch from this side. But you got to make sure your pages are where you really want them to be. You just have to play with it and see what works best for it's different for everybody. The other thing, um, you know, to easily fold and just gradually, or I should say, take care to fold your little flaps in. You can also, I guess, use your um, bone folder and your scoreboard. But I mean, you have that line there from the original envelope flap. You know, like when you're building your own um, cover. And you're little by little, give it a little smoosh and kind of gently push that down. Okay. So what are we, are we buffering? I look good from my end. I don't know. Okay, so that's that one. Then I was working on this one. I should really maybe put something here. Oh, so I'm totally gone. Deb, I see I see everybody and I see everybody chatting and I look okay on Hi Sandra. Okay, Deb still has me. Thanks for stopping in, Sandra. Are we back or are you girls still still uh, buffering? Oh, good. Okay, Kathy, great. So this is um another one that I was working on with a gray envelope. Not sure why I picked the gray envelope and then I covered it up with paper. But this is Stampera. And um, I said earlier before some of you got here that I think I'm going to put some sketch paper in here. So I have some sketch paper, a tablet that I was thinking about using. over here because this is a gigantic tablet let's see hey this is a and i haven't done a whole lot in this it's a little it's a little intimidating this book because i i don't know why i bought such a big one i guess i guess it was probably on uh clearance this is um i tried to do a sketch of my son-in-law it's pretty close. I mean, the mouth is not right. And of course, I get discouraged. So I stopped. And uh, so I think I'm going to take a few sheets out of this. And these little envelope journals, I put maybe 10 to 12 sheets of. Yes, the thumbs up, thumbs down would be great. Just show some activity. So let me just get now. I haven't measured. I'm terrible with measuring. Terrible. I should show you what I've, I'm working on in my. Uh, sorry for that noise. In my ledger. Uh, Kathy Arbor, if you've been following along with Kathy Arbor's art classes, and that's Kathy with a K, Arbor, A-R-B-O-U-R. She has the channel on YouTube. Very talented gal. Very generous with her talent. Um, so this is a ledger that I've been practicing. Okay, this is my rabbit trail. Oh, I don't think I've had a rabbit trail before. So this is, uh, some of you may have seen this before. So I drew this little face and then I collage around it. 
and then I have posted some on Instagram. This is um, my Santa. I drew the Santa and then put some color on him. Drew the holly leaf down here on berries and then collaged around with just some things that I liked. And then I had a toothpaste spread where I did a bunch of eyes. This one's not finished. Almost, but not quite. I want to add some words. And I'm not quite sure what direction I want to go with the words. Oh, thank you, Kathy. And um, so I just cut out some leaves out of some magazines. And I think this might have been a Tim Holtz or a, that could just be a a butterfly from a paper pack. I'm not, I'm not quite sure. Did some stamping and um, did some swirls there from my um, stencil, stencils. Okay. And then I saw these, I love, if you know, if you knew me well, I love jewelry. I love diamonds, anything sparkly. So I did these faces, but I saw these rings. So this is in progress. Not sure if I, I chose blue. I'm not sure if I like the blue, but those diamond rings are going to go around those faces. And then I might try to find in a magazine some other kinds of jewelry or rings that I can, can draw in. So that's in progress. I'm really enjoying this. Sure and doing all that kinds of stuff. Okay, so now I need to measure, which is really a struggle for me. So I want, uh, let's see, to be on the safe side, I guess I can go four and a half, so that would be nine by, Let's do a nine by six, and that should probably actually. I think that's what I put in the black, the same size that I'm putting in the black journal. Nine by, yeah, nine by six will work great. Okay, now. Let's see what size this is. I don't even know what size this paper is. I think sometimes when I think about streaming, I think that I need to hurry. But, you know, you guys come and go as you please and as you can or you want to. I have to learn, I think, maybe to slow down a little bit. I try to have things prepared ahead of time so I can zip, 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 zip. Um, but I know for me personally, I don't mind watching what someone else is doing if they're ripping or tearing paper or, you know, watching paint dry. So I guess it's all good. Of course, my sewing machine is across the room. I noticed that Lisa, um, thanks Holly. I noticed that Lisa has come on. So uh, you may want to go over there. I'm not sure what she's working on this afternoon. I just did a Julia Child, threw it on the floor. I used to crack my grandmother up. It always looked like she was tossing stuff on the floor. And she probably wasn't, but I definitely am. All right. I was looking for some paper to use in journals. I love the look of tea dyed and um, thanks Kathy. Thanks for stopping in. Have a good afternoon. 
And so I found a place, uh, a shop on Etsy where the gal had some, a bundle of um, coffee dyed paper. Oh my gosh, I got that today. It's beautiful. And then she sent me some little extra treats. Gosh, it was like Christmas. All right, so this is 11, 11 by 14. So I want... So if I do it this way, I'm so bad at this. Let's see. Try to fit that fake Christmas tree back in the box. Good luck. My husband did that yesterday. I said that would be a great tip for those companies, right? Give us extra room. Fits in there when it comes from the manufacturer, but then after you take it out and fluff it, you can't get it back in the box. All right. I have a huge paper cutter. And I have it behind me. I'm just going to sit it in here. All right. So I'm going to maybe try to cut two at a time. I'm going to go lengthwise because then I can get maybe two. Uh, that's not going to work because my cutter only takes 12. Okay. So I want it to be nine inches this way. So let's do this. Nine inches. And then I want to cut it six inches this way. I guess I don't really have to have all my pages the same size either, right? That would give me variety. Let's see how that looks. I hate to waste paper. I was watching uh, Kathy Berg and those gals earlier today. And that Lena. Oh, she's so cute. She's so funny. And she hates to waste stuff. All right. So I'm going nine inches this way. I do like distressed paper in some of the journals that I make, but I just don't like distressing it. I think it's because I have to wait too long for it to dry. And I'm going to go six inches this way. So that's two, four, six, eight. Yeah, probably. Holly, did you see that? Um, I guess it's like her composition book that she's doing with those those cartoon. I would buy that book. If she published that book, I would buy that book. That was so cool. All right. So I want to do nine inches this way. She, yeah, she's a hoot. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I, I have to I have to go in and mark her. I don't think I have a bell rung, the bell on for her, so I know when she's doing anything live. Okay, so if I do that and then I do size these are now. So these are five by all right so let me let me put these off too because if I do this as um 
with the idea of it being an art journal that somebody can pop into their handbag and take with them and hi oh hi um now okay this is my question is it jilly or gilly I would like to know how to say that correctly. Jilly. Okay, great. Thanks, Jilly. Thanks for coming in. All right. So this was 11. I'm going to trim this to nine inches. And then I'll have some smaller pages as well. That'll work. Just a few. Variety. Spice of life. Right, girl? Oops, sorry. Hit the camera. Uh-oh. I don't know. Is Ian still here or did I miss Ian going out? Sorry. Sorry, ladies. Oh. Oh, Lena's been on a break for a bit. Okay. All right. So here's my mixed media paper. And let's see what time is it. Um... If you hear a ruckus, my husband may be coming in. The dogs will kind of go crazy. Oh, no. It's somebody at the door. Oh, well. We'll have to come back. All right. So then I'm going to score those. I have a small scoreboard, which really is great for this type of thing, but no idea where I put it. Let's see if I've missed anybody else. I don't know. I must have missed Dar. I don't know who Dar is. All right, so I'm going to go at four and a half. And I have my, oops, oh, mashed right through that one. That's not good. A little heavy handed on that. Now, I'm not going to worry about distressing or doing anything to these pages, because like I said, I'm, my, my idea is for this to be an art journal. Envelope journal. And I'm just thinking how I can decorate it. The outside cover. And right now, nothing's coming to me. But this is really nice paper, regardless, to write on. Glue things down. It could be a glue book. I started a glue book today. Like, I need one more book to start. Started a glue book. I had no idea what a glue book is. I've learned so much in this last year following gals on. Oh, Kat, you're Dar. Hi. Okay, I didn't realize. All right, great. I'm going to try to remember that. And I need to, I think, move my chat so I can see how long I've been here. We inherit our, inherited our daughter's little pooch. Um, our daughter had her second baby uh, not quite a year. Well, April, he'll be two. And her little Maltese is always on the skitterish side. All right, Holly. That's great. But our little uh, inherited pooch here, she drinks her water too fast and then she gets coughing. Poor little thing. 
Yeah, my mother-in-law didn't. She liked crafts, but she didn't. Um, we didn't really have the same taste. And uh, she mostly did a lot of knitting or that um, that plastic canvas stuff. That's why I love when you fall into some stuff that you've been looking for, maybe in a, a Goodwill shop, or if you happen to stop and do any flea marketing. Oh my gosh, it's like so cool. We, um, a couple of years ago, we were in a outside sale. I guess you could call it a tag sale. Just a bunch of people on the sidewalk. They had a lot of stuff for sale, and I happened to find a lot of really neat uh, acrylic stamps. The girl was not going to be doing it anymore, and I love finding stuff like that. Oh, well, I'm glad she has you that she can trust. Somehow that guy didn't get folded. All right, let's see how many pages I have. Now, I was thinking I'd like to make my way over to my sewing machine and stitch this. But maybe I should just uh, see what I have as far as decorating the front. All right, so I have my pages here that I've scored and folded. Hopefully I measured right and they're going to fit in this book. <laughs> now, in my one book, in my um, Christmas one, this is always an option. Oh, look, and I, I hung my little, Murray, my little Murray snowflake on there. I stitched in extra pockets in the center, and I also stitched in two two signatures so that would be an option for you if you're making one for yourself or for a friend and you'd like to have more pages um you know they can hold quite a bit so this uh, mixed media paper is a little thicker and you could really i guess deckle your edges i was thinking i'd like to have one of those rulers that has the wonky side you know where you can tear things funny i think i dented that on my cutter and i thought i had some different size pages here but now they're all looking the same to me nope they're different Okay. The other thing to think about and to consider is if you do have a machine and you're going to be stitching these in, how much will your machine stitch through? Because I'm not sure if my machine's going to stitch through all that paper. Because this is heavier paper. All right, let's see. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay. Well, you know what? I could poke a hole through these and do it that way, the old way, and just do a, um, you know, that pamphlet stitch. That's an idea. All right. So let me... I'm going to do every other one, I think, of the different size pages. Now that you watched me put them all together that way, let's do it again. Holly, how long have I been on? Do you, can you tell? I haven't figured out how to move my, maybe an hour and a half. Now, when I first started to um, make different journals, and I was watching different folks 
66 minutes. Great. Thanks, Ian. And I'll put this short one on the outside. I saw a gal use... Um, it almost looked like a, uh, a trough, like an animal's trough. And she used that to punch holes in her in her um, books, in her pages that she was putting together. Well, I always like to have all the trinkets and all that, you know, it just doesn't make sense. I don't don't make that many books for me to pay the money to buy one of those things. Uh, I don't know if they call it a binding board or I'm not sure if the exact title of it, but it was really cool. But then when I watched different videos and watched other people making journals, turns out you can use a big old catalog. So I got myself um, an old catalog, and that's what I use to pop my holes. And I'm, like I said, I'm not very good at measuring, and I usually eyeball everything. Now this, I'm just lining up my paper. It doesn't have to be perfect for me. Trying to put all the like-sized pages in about the same area. All right. And then I need to find a binder clip or something where I can hold these pages where I want them. And that's not going to open because I have that shut with a... Okay, let's grab this one. Pardon my hand, but I have a little colored chart. The um, area surrounding my desk is metal. And so I have different um, magnets and I have different things hanging and sticking everywhere so I can just grab what I need when I need it. I have my scissors sticking to magnets, little pieces of wire sticking to magnets, but it works for me. This little guy, I don't need that. All right, so I'm gonna punch holes in there and I'm gonna stitch. <clears throat> So what will happen is I'm going to stitch down here and down here. And then I'm going to stitch around the entire two envelopes. But what I'm trying to decide is if I do, if I put my pages in by hand, I'm not going to be able to stitch it. So let's see. Hi, Joy. Thank you for coming in. I think I'm going to pop over to my, um, yes, Holly phone books. I just got a, an old catalog and it works really great for me. All right. I'm going to just pop over to my. If you guys don't mind, if it's okay, I'm going to pop over to my machine and I'm going to stitch this. I'm not going to do anything fancy. I'm just going to do the, the two center parts and then around the outside edge so that I can close my pockets up. All right. And then when I come back over, I'd at least try, I would at least try to like to get this stitched in. All right, Holly, I'll be right back. Now, if you hear a big thump, I've fallen over the mess I have on the floor. No laughing, please. 
Oh, I don't have a health issue freak or anything. Maybe I should. Uh, I know. I'll put out one of my. I'll put out one of my. Uh, here. Here's some eyes. Have a look at some eyes. Well, I don't even know if that's in frame. All right, guys. I'll be right back. My granddaughter was here. She'd tell me I need to get my room straightened up. She's four. All right. Let's see. Thank <laughs> you. 
light bulbs down. All right. All right. Okay. See if anybody's left. Okay, I'll just start with three things. I went to art. God, I'm so overwhelmed by the mess for time. No. Nah. My mess, my room here is. Whew. I don't know if you heard me. My granddaughter, she was here. She's four. She's done this in the past. She looks out here and she's, Amma, you need to clean up out here. This is another another um, envelope journal that I made. 20 pages. This one I just used book pages that I gessoed and uh, grunged up. Tried to use the theme of um, bees and honeycombs little pocket in the back I used that Tim Holtz um, what is it vellum paper it's just, it's just simple little pocket in the front I think I have that in my Etsy shop I'm not sure I've kind of lost control okay I have threads everywhere a little, a little bit of a problem with my machine. Stopped in a spot. But you can see here what I did. I, I caught that and I didn't realize I caught it. Excuse me. Call from Edward Nikolsky. Okay, that's, that's a roofing guy. My husband can deal with that later. So let me just trim my little threads. Oh, I wonder if that's who knocked on the door. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna be in so much trouble if it was the roof guy. Excuse me one second. I guess I should, I really need to pick this up. It's too late. I think it's too late. See, I have a mess down here where you can see the tension on my machine is not great. I really just started doing that. And this here is not good. See where I, because I stitched it this way and I didn't, um, come up high enough when I stitch there. So I'll have to adjust that. So you just trim off all your little threads. If you like the threads, leave them. Well, that's a good idea, Jelly. Don't get discouraged, Holly. You are not alone. I am definitely a messy crafter, but unfortunately, it doesn't bother me. I wish it bothered me a little bit, to tell you the truth. All right, so my stitching didn't turn out too well on this. Look at this here, guys. I pulled the wrong thing, and it's all coming undone. So I'm going to have to restitch that. But I guess I'll leave that for another day. Because if I put this in here now and I hand stitch that in. I'm not going to be able to come back around and stitch. So I think that might be my. Ticket to maybe end the stream. Because I don't have anything else ready for for me to, um, I don't have the pages ready to go into the little one. The black one I do, but then again, I'd have to stitch, but I'm having a problem with my machine. So, 
I think I'll call this done for today. Thank you for joining me. So I have my little one little finished project. I'll work with my machine. And I hope you found um, the little um, plastic wrap tip helpful. You'll have to let me know if you try that, um, if that works for you. I'll be interested to know that. And I think I'll call that done for today. Thanks so much. This was fun. I am still a little nervous and uh, feel like I rushed a little bit. And I have a feeling that uh, I missed the roofer guy because I guess today is Tuesday. My husband didn't remind me. Oh, well, pray for me. <laughs> Thanks, guys. I'll see you at the next stream somewhere on YouTube. Thanks for joining me. Have a good afternoon. Bye-bye.